Understanding how individuals vary in their digestion involves an understanding of how the digestive process is regulated. How does food know when to pass from one organ to another? In this video, we're going to discuss how the digestive system is coordinated between organ systems. And we're going to talk about which hormones are important for regulating both the food and the gastrointestinal secretions that are critical for effective digestion. We are then going to apply our understanding of the digestive physiology to understand a common disease, gastroesophageal reflux disease. The digestive system consists of a variety of main organs that are separated by sphincter muscles that control the flow of food in between them. They are also supported by a variety of accessory organs that provide secretions to aid in digestion and absorption. How these organs communicate with each other is complex, but one way in which they communicate is through a variety of endocrine secretions, hormones that are secreted from one organ that communicate to another. The first of these is a hormone called gastrin. It's secreted from the stomach. When the stomach comes into contact with food, gastrin is secreted. And this is what stimulates both the contraction of the stomach and secretions of both acid and enzymes into the stomach. This is important. We don't want to be secreting acid and enzymes into our stomach when we're not digesting food. We want these to be secreted on demand. And these secretions are controlled by gastrin. The next hormone is called secretin. It's released from the small intestine. When food gets into the small intestine, it signals to close the pyloric sphincter. That's to allow for an ordered amount of food to get into the small intestine and not have too much food into the small intestine such that it can't be efficiently digested and absorbed. In addition to closing the pyloric sphincter, it also promotes the release of bicarbonate. The bicarbonate is going to be important for neutralizing the stomach acids. It will also prevent the release of more stomach secretions, so it will prevent more stomach acid secretion and stop the contractions of the stomach muscles. The next hormone, also released from the small intestine, is called cholecystokinin, or CCK. Again, it's released when food comes into contact with the small intestine. Similar to secretin, it's going to signal to the pancreas, but rather than promoting the release of bicarbonate, it's going to promote the release of digestive enzymes. They're going to help with breaking down food. CCK also signals to the gallbladder to promote the release of bile to aid in the digestion of fats. Also, similar to secretin, CCK is going to prevent further stomach contractions and acid secretions. The coordinated release of gastrin, secretin, and CCK are the main ways by which the stomach and the small intestine can communicate to each other, such that just the right amount of food gets into the small intestine at just the right rate to allow for digestion to occur. Here's a summary of these three hormones. Gastrin is released from the stomach, secretin is released from the small intestine, as is CCK. Gastrin promotes acid release, while secretin and CCK prevent acid release while promoting release of enzymes and bicarbonate into the small intestine. Gastroesophageal reflux disease is a very common condition, affecting 20 to 30 percent of adults. The etiology of this disease is that there is an ineffective closing of the esophageal sphincter or a buildup of stomach acids. Over time, this buildup of stomach acids can damage the esophagus, it can cause pain, and over time, could even cause cancer. GERD is an example by which stomach acids are produced too much and can cause a very common pathology in humans. So take a moment and pause the video and think, what are the hormones that cause acid secretions and what are the hormones that prevent acid secretions? How might they play a role in the pathophysiology of GERD? In summary, in this video we described three hormones, gastrin, secretin, and CCK. These allow for the communication between digestive organs. The efficient digestion occurs when there's an orderly passage of food through the digestive system. One major aspect of digestion is the release of stomach acids. These aid in digestion, but too much stomach acids or the incomplete closure of the esophageal sphincters can result in damage, a disease that is called GERD.